Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Glory Road teaching. Uh, my name is Adam King, and I thank you so much for being here today. Uh, for those of you that are here, which <laughs> technically is nobody right at the moment, but if you join and watch this later, just I hope that uh, you'll be able to, to take the teaching and just uh, and get into it and uh, learn about who you are in Christ Jesus. So we're going to be talking today about battle between two worlds. This is the biggest predicament all of us have, is we live in two worlds on one earth. That's our biggest problem here. Thank you, Felicia, for coming. We live in two worlds on one earth. Well, I thought the earth was the world. No, a world represents a system, and there's two systems that are battling back and forth for your focus and for your life. And one is trying to give you life and the other one's trying to destroy you. And uh, so these are the two worlds we have to take a look at. One is called the kingdom of God and the other one is the kingdom of darkness. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for coming and thank you all for the hearts. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. So let's go over here and look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Just one verse. Some of you are saying, well, that's a miracle. <laughs> Just one verse. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of of the devil. Now, let's just take it in context of what he's saying here. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sin is from the beginning. Well, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. He that committed sin is working out the fruition of Satan's intention. Satan's intention was that you sin. Why? So you would die. <laughs> that was his intention. So he that committed sin, in essence, whether people know it or not, they are cooperating with Satan, Satan's intention, which is to destroy you, annihilate you, uncover you and cause you to die and have zero influence in this world. Remember, we're talking about two worlds. He doesn't want you in this world system with the kingdom of God within you. So his goal is to, is to get you to where you rebel against the kingdom of God so you're in the world with no power. You're in the world system. You're in the kingdom of darkness, but you have no power to change it. You will just be affected by the death that's in the system of the world. But if you've got the kingdom on the inside of you, now you can go into that world system of, of darkness and totally bring light to it. This is what Jesus was trying to say. You are the light of the world. You're the light of the kingdom of heaven. Now go into this natural world, this system, this death-based system, and go put some life in it. That's what he was really trying to tell us. So one of these kingdoms functions with death, and one of the kingdoms function with life. Now if you want to really know what the intention of Satan was, let's go over here to... Well, I go to this one other scripture. So I'm talking about it. Genesis. And let's go to um, verse, verses 16 and 17 of Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Now we understand that as soon as Adam partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he died. But at the same time, his eyes were opened. And he saw that he was naked. So... Some might say, well, wasn't his eyes already open? I mean, he saw the tree, didn't he? He partook of the fruit, didn't he? Yeah. But his 
naturalize his senses. Now, you're talking about your physical eyes. He was talking about his whole senses. What he could see, hear, smell, taste, and touch came alive. Why? Because his spiritual eyes closed. Now, he had, he, in the kingdom, when we walk in the earth like we're designed to, we can operate by both natural senses and spiritual senses. So in the natural, you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. But in the spirit, you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. One, they just have two different worlds that they function in. Okay? So you have a spiritual senses and you have a natural set of senses. When Adam sinned, his spiritual senses closed. His spiritual eyes closed. He was no longer as sensitive in the spirit as he was now sensitive naturally. Now they could see, hear, smell, taste, and touch, and that became their truth. And man has been walking that way ever since. I believe it when I see it. So the, the thing is, is that when Adam stopped walking by his spiritual sense, Jude, thank you so much for coming, sir. When he stopped walking by his spiritual sense, he was what you call uncovered. It's like having a set of armor on. Let's say you're back in the medieval day and you've got this armor on, you know, and then your enemy is standing in front of you and they can't do much to you. You know, they're throwing these arrows at you and they're just bouncing off of this, <laughs> this metal garment you have on. But what would happen if you were stripped of your armor? Now the enemy is standing in front of you. What's he going to be able to do? He's going to be able to kill you. See, that's the whole goal. His whole intention was to cause you and me to be uncovered. Well, that kind of makes me want to know, well, what was I covered with? What was Adam covered with in the Garden of Eden that would cause Satan to have a desire to get him uncovered? Well, he was covered with the glory of God. Psalm 8 says that when God created Adam, he crowned him with his glory from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He was not only full of the glory, but the glory came out of him and acted as a shield and a buckler, acted as the shield of faith, the armor of God, the armor of light that the Bible tells us that we're supposed to put on. So Satan's intention was to strip him and cause him not to have this armor on. Because if you don't have the armor of God, which is the armor of light, and the Bible says the life of God is the light of men. Then he has caused death to come upon you. He stripped you of your armor. You see that? Now let's go back to 1 John 3.8. Here again. He that committeth sin, the wages of sin is the devil, is of the devil. Or in other words, again, he is moving by Satan's intention. He is connecting to, agreeing with Satan's intention, whether the person knows it or not. The intention of Satan was to get you uncovered. And the only way he could do that is you have to sin. So when we are accepting and just, you know, walking by sin and saying, well, we're just sinners saved by grace, what we're actually saying is, is I agree with the mind of Satan. <laughs> I agree. Hey, I, let's, let's find out, you know, he wanted to uncover us. Let's go on and get uncovered. You know, now we're not consciously aware of that, but we're doing that. We're actually agreeing with his intention was to uncover you so that death could affect you. Now, he, now, why did he want you to die? The main reason is, is that God sent you and me here as an ambassador to take care of diplomatic business. If you die, you lose your physical body. If you lose your physical body, you are now illegal as a spiritual entity. You're illegal on this natural world. You have to have a body to function in this natural world. So his whole intention was to kill you, get the glory off of you, so you would die and have to go. That's how he decided to do it. Now what he'd do is cause you to be you and me to be ignorant of the life of God so that he's basically living off of the residual of what he did in the garden. He's getting residual payment. <laughs> you know, Everybody's dying. He's sitting back going, <laughs> See, this thing works pretty good, man. I told one lie, got them to believe it, and it's been working ever since. Because people just pass on the lie. 
So let's take a look at this again. For this purpose, since he that committed sin is of the devil, the devil sinned from the beginning, for this purpose, if the wages of sin is death, and it's to get the covering off of you, then we start to understand why Jesus came. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, if the works of the devil, and his, which is based on his intention, was to get you to lose your covering and to cause death to take you out, to swallow you up and get you out of here so you get out of this place and you can't affect the world that his mindset is governing, then for the purpose for Jesus to come is to reverse it. And the only way Christ could reverse it is by giving you his armor of glory, his armor of light. It's the only way he would have to give you the light so that the light, which is the life of men, could swallow up the death. You see, you, you, the life in you is what's going to swallow up the death around you. Only thing Jesus did was to put your armor back on. He gave you access to the armor again. That's how he planned on defeating the devil. is through the armor of God that he'd give you. See, it's already done in the mind of God. He just wants us to walk it out. He wants us to be able to step into this armor, never step out of it, and walk in the very life of God. This has to be the purpose because he says it here. For he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. That's the thing. He sinned from the beginning. The wages of sin is death. So, with that in mind, the purpose for Jesus' coming was to take care of this death so that he could, what, destroy it. And uh, there's another scripture over here. He said, For now is made manifest, this is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, But now is made manifest by the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this is, he's talking about the purpose now, who hath abolished death and brought life and immortality to light. See, he abolished death, brought life and immortality to you. And he said, and brought it to light. And, and the light is the life of men. So if men walk in the light, they're supposed to be walking in the fact that they've got now the armor of God on, which swallows up the death or the intention of the mindset of Satan. And now they're impervious to any kind of pain, sickness and disease, death or anything. Nothing can touch them. This is why it's so important that you and I understand that this is the gospel. It even says here, to abolish death, and he brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The gospel is the good news that life is made available to you in the kingdom. So the kingdom is here. The life and the light of God is there. Abide in it. The entrance of God's word into you brings light. So walk in that light, which is the life of God, which swallows up the death around you. Now, let's not make the gospel something what we postpone for the future. This is it. Always has been. But the more we live in this natural world apart from our spiritual senses, start leaning towards the inner man where the spiritual senses are alive, the more we walk by our natural senses the more we don't understand. We, we disconnect from the life that's within us. Most people don't even know it, so they're just still walking in the flesh all the days of their life, never knowing that death has, has an adversary called the life of God. And it's just right here on the inside of us. And then the Word in our mouth becomes the sword of the Spirit. God's Word is spiritual life. And when we take the word and we on purpose are saying words of life, you're automatically cutting up words of darkness and death all around us. How do you live in two worlds on one earth? Shut one of them down by only walking in the kingdom of light. The other one won't even have a have an effect on you. Now that's where we all got to get to. I'm not saying it's where any of us are. I'm saying it's where we got to get to. And it doesn't take long. It takes immersion. So just understand this. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of life is what Jesus came to give you. Use it and swallow up.
death today. Thank you all so much for coming. I so appreciate your faithfulness to show up here, not only on this live, but uh, on TikTok. If you're watching this and you don't have TikTok, please download that app right onto your smartphone and then go to my user name, which is God Man Superman, and then follow me. And then you can see lives every day at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope to see you there. Yeah. Till we meet again, I'm Adam King. God bless you. Bye-bye.